guys just last weekend we started our hot season off with our trip to Universal Studios for their Halloween Horror Nights event over in Orlando. And today, we keep it going. We are here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Check it out for their Halloween Scream event. the park. It's gonna be a little jerky. I'm walking with just one hand. Perfect. Thank you. Ooh, check this out. It looks like they've done something a little different. Be typically, there's a skull here, but this looks like some type of like wicker or tree figure, but still surrounded by some skulls. Awesome. I'm excited. Now, guys, it is opening night of Hollow Scream here at Butch Gardens Williamsburg and today it's running from 6 o'clock to 10 p.m. So it is ending a little bit early. We got here at 7.30 roughly and we're gonna start our way through. We're gonna see if in two and a half hours we could get through the whole entire park but we do have the quick queues that we got throughout the month of August. So if we need to, we could use these to get through everything. Let's go into Ripper Row. All right, we head into Ripper Row. It looks like they're already waiting for us. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love... Ooh, they got scared. <laughs> I love the ambience. And it looks like they have like a photo op opportunity over here as well. Oh, the fog is rolling out, my friends. The fog is rolling out. I haven't seen Jack the Ripper hurt yet. But it looks like the London police are out. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Over here you have Monster Stomp, which is one of the shows. Today, we're not gonna be doing many shows just because we don't have much time. We're gonna try to do our best to get through some of the haunted houses, if not all of them. Um, but we will be back to check out the show, so stay tuned. All right, so we just made it through Ripper Row, which I gotta say is a welcomed, returned scare zone here at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. I enjoyed it a lot. It looks like we got a couple new things, like these spider webs up and about as you exit Ripper Row. We're gonna go ahead and make a right towards Ireland. This is the channel and my favorite time of the year. So we're looking at having a blast here. Um, like I said, we were last weekend at Halloween Horror Nights. So throughout this whole entire month and next month, we're gonna be doing a ton of different haunts. So make sure to stay tuned on the channel. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the content that's coming out. Comment down below and let me know, are you gonna be coming to Bush Gardens, uh, Bush Gardens, Bush Gardens, Howl Screen over here at Williamsburg? Or are you gonna check out any of the other house rooms? All right, we keep making our way through. This is the area where the large pumpkin typically is. So the large skull in the front of the park is not there and the large pumpkin itself is not here either. Two really like iconic photo op opportunities that have changed. At least in the front of the park, they replaced it with like that wicker figure. Here, they didn't put anything for the pumpkin. And it looks like Finnegan Flyer is currently running. Check them out, they go nice and high. I can't ride that, it makes me sick. But we make our way into Ireland. Here's where you're gonna run into the Jack is Back show, as well as I believe our first haunted house. But we'll see. Oh, I love it already. Oh, you got some projections and the bar at the other end. I wonder if we're gonna run into any characters. And here we have a quick sign, September 10th through October 31st on select nights, the weekends, we have Bush Gardens Hollow Scream. So we are here for September 10th. It looks like we may have an entrance to one of the houses over here. There's definitely a lot more props that have gone up. A bunch of like corn stalk and bays of hay. 
And here we are, right next to Grogan's Pub, we have Killerney Diner. Let's go ahead and e enter. Let's see where the entrance is. Oh, and now I can see where that big pumpkin has gone. They actually moved it over here to Ireland. Somebody was nice enough to tell me that was actually the exit to Killerney Diner. And right over here you have Jack himself, the icon of Bush Gardens Hollow Scream, taking photos with everybody. We'll probably be back and take a picture with him. But for now, let's go check out Killerney Diner. And the control bar is nice and ready. And check it out, they actually have the screens up so you could see some of the scares inside of the house that you could activate. Check it out. So that first one is a map scare. And then you got two other ones which are actual house scares. I wonder where the activating triggers are. All right, you guys, it is time for our first house here at Hollow Scream. It's been a really long time since we've been to Hollow Scream. Uh, last, last year, they didn't have it. They had a like a smaller event with no houses, just a few scare zones. We're gonna start off with Killerney Diner. I gotta admit, this is a house that I don't know much about, but I have heard a lot of fans of this particular house coming. So I hope that my expectations are low because I don't know and I'm about to get surprised. I'll let you guys know right when we exit. Let's go check it out. So look at that glowing sign. It looks nice and cool. Let's go in. All right, now this is a great sign as we make our way through. They do have the switchbacks ready, but it doesn't look like there's much of a line. I don't wanna jinx myself just yet because I can't see what's across that corner right there, but the line looks nice and short from here. All righty, that is Killer Me Diner in the bag. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. The, the storyline went really smooth. Uh, long story short, you got some cannibals in there that are after you, you're their next meal. And you go everywhere from behind the diner in the kitchen where they're setting all their meals up. And of course, I'm not focusing, there we go. Where they're setting all their meals up to then the actual diner and some of the patrons getting eaten. Ooh, it was actually really cool. They had some really cool like props in there. I, I gotta say, I, I'm impressed. I had nothing going in, but a lot coming out. <laughs> that sounds terrible. All right, All right. It's having a hard time focusing here. So let's switch around and keep the walk going. Now this is over by the wolf enclosure area. If you guys saw, the last time that we were here, we did a construction update showing everything that's coming to Hollow Scream. A lot has gone up since that time because, like I said, we had that one trip in between. But check it out, the fog's out. Let's see if we can see some of the wolves. Oh, I think I see one right there. And we talked about this cart right here last time. I knew it would get themed and there'd be like some type of like projection, something going on in there. Let's take a look some type of screen with a girl and a doll. Doesn't really vibe with the theme of all the wolves here. Like this guy right here that's chilling. But it is pretty cool. Let's keep on going into France. I'm really interested to see what's going on in France because France is typically like the party area as well as Fool's Court. But Fool's Court didn't come back this year. I already hear some of the music. So I think the party's still going but the scare zone is gone. Let's see what's there. Well, look at this headless lady and her minion. And of course, a DJ over here. I wonder if that's DJ Melody. And over here, we have these bushes with humans in them, or human heads at least. Woo! And we continue to make our way through France and where typically Fool's Court would be, there is now confirmed nothing. You got a little henna station, which is probably for like face painting. And then you got your Les Frites fries that you could get, but no scare actors. All right, we make our way out of France. We head on over into Meat Market. This is one of the new scare zones took out over for Axe Alley. I already could see some of the scare actors. There's one. It looks like she has somebody's face. What's going on with this guy? Oh, he's deranged. 
Oh yeah, the scare actors are all over the place. And I can hear a chainsaw. Oh. Scary. Woo! <laughs> There's some guys hiding in the bushes with ghillie suits on too. But Plenty, plenty of chainsaw crew. Woo! Oh, check it out. It looks like we have some of the meats up for sale here at Meat Market. Oh, I gotta leave. I thought you were selling it. This is supposed to be a market. Oh, it's kind of almost like an outdoor scare zone. Freddy Finger Foods. Ooh. Ah. This is different. This bridge is typically covered in spider webs, while now towards the entrance there was a ton of spider webs. Now you just have like the lighting, some netting on the side. Huh. I like it, but I am used to having the spider webs here. All right, taking a quick stop right here. I just wanted to stop and kind of absorb meat market. As a replacement for Axe Alley, I gotta say, it is pretty cool. The actors were nice and like active with everybody. They were, they were definitely like taking their role very serious and a lot, good good, uh, good amount of actors out there as far as like, you know, chainsaw crew and then people acting like victims. I enjoyed it greatly and I can only expect that that's gonna only, only gonna get better as the event goes forward. This is only opening night. Now, let's keep on moving through the event. And now we make our way into one of the ones that I'm anticipating being awesome, Hex Hollow. I already like the like ambient green lighting. Oh. <laughs> Look at these guys. Come on, come at me, bro. Ooh. This guy's doing his thing over here. This area is typically where the vampires are. It's Vampire Point. This year replaced by Hex Hollow. And we're making our way out of Hex Hollow. Let's see if we have any final surprises. I can't tell what they're wearing, but it looks kind of like a, a scorpion mask. Oh, check it out, you got some project, projection mapping onto the, the building. All right, we continue to make our way through. I gotta say, I love the event, love Busch Gardens Williamsburg. What they're doing is actually pretty cool as far as what we've experienced for the first haunted house. I, I thought it was pretty impressive. And now we're getting to, towards the area in the back, Oktoberfest over by Fest House, that is gonna have some of the more anticipated houses that I'm looking forward to. Witch of the Woods, the Edgar Allan Poe House, I, I think, you know, we're running short on time. It's 8.40, I think, 8.30. So the event, we only have an hour and a half. I think I might have to pull out those quick cues. And what a coincidence, we run into Nevermore, which is in Dark Castle. RIP Dark Castle, but it's being put to good use this event. Let's go check out the Edgar Allan Poe House, Nevermore. This is a little interesting. The entrance to Nevermore is down that way at the entrance of Dark Castle, but the quick cue is over here before you cross into Oktoberfest. So we're about to do the quick queue for Nevermore. All right, Nevermore in the bag. I gotta say, I, I think that's one that I'm gonna have to come back and check out again. There's something about the Dark Castle houses that for some reason never hit quite right, at least not the first time. That's one that I expected to be really good. And it just left me wanting a little bit more and mostly after checking out Killer Knee Diner. Let's see over here by Fest House if we could go check out Witch of the Woods. So just like Monster Stomp here at Fest House, they have another show called Phantasm Fest House, or Phantasm of the Fest House. Something that, once again, we're not gonna be doing any shows today, but we will come back to check out some of the shows. And here we are at the entrance of Witch of the Woods. This is a house that's currently shared with Bush Gardens Tampa as well. I look forward to checking this one out, but time is of the essence, so we gotta get that quick cue. Alrighty, Witch of the Woods, done. I gotta say, I always like a nice like outdoor haunted house. And I gotta say that this year, the scenic design team deserves some kudos. 
they've definitely stepped that up quite a bit. There's a lot more scenes to walk through than typical. And you can tell they've taken a little bit more time to add those details. But one thing I am running into is that, that these quick cues that I got last month in the month of August as part of the patch member benefits, a lot of the employees here don't aren't familiar with them. So, you know, they're hesitating to take them. Um, and actually at Witch of the Woods, they gave it back to me and said, yeah, you're good, just go on through. So technically now I have an extra quick cue, which I thought was interesting. Um, but hey, that's a cool benefit. We still got two houses to go. All right, we're walking through the Verbolton area. I gotta say, Verbolton at nighttime is a really cool ride, but tonight, tonight is all about the houses. So we'll keep on going. We still have Cirque du Sinistro and uh, Dystopia left to complete. Those are the last two on the way out of the park. We've already completed three. And so far, I think the Killarney Diner has been my favorite one so far. And here we go, we're crossing my favorite bridge of the event. You know, oh, there it is. I was gonna say, typically there's music here that sets the tone. And there it is, I could hear it now. But it, it does look like a little bit less theming on the bridge. I, I think it could be that we're just early at the event and there's still much more to go up. Right over here in the San Marco area, the stage right here is where the Skeletons will be playing. But as we cross over, we're going in to the Garden of Souls. And here we go. Here are the Skeletons and their show times. We got a 3.30, a 6, an 8, and a 9.30. So right now, there's only 9.30 left. We only have an hour left here in the park and two houses to go. So we're going to be skipping everything else and making sure that we get the houses done. But so far, it has been a pretty productive day here at Howl Scream in the two hours that we've been here. Here's another look at the skeleton stage as well as the seating area. Pretty cool. I like this. This will be a nice little chill spot to watch a show while having some food. And as we march our way into the Garden of Souls, it has come to my attention that we've done all the new houses. So the only two ones left is Cirque du Sinistro and Dystopia, which are two houses that we've done before. And if I had to kind of give my, my rating on all the new houses, it's going to go um, Killarney Diner, Witch of the Woods, and then last but not least, Nevermore. But that may change. We're going to be back to the event several more times. And maybe the, the like actors and everything kind of change up on us. We'll see. And here we are in Garden of Souls. Ooh. It's like nice and quiet over here. Scary. Oh, I don't even know what language that is. Check this guy out. It's like a skeleton. Oh, and look, they've repurposed the skeleton that's at the entrance typically. All right, so we found both the pumpkin and the skeleton in different spots. And check it out, when we were vlogging the construction, we saw the Garden of Glow. I thought it was gonna be a bar, but it's actually like a little, like they got glow sticks and necklaces and all different types of like glow items that they sell. Huh, that's pretty cool. Typically it, it is a bar, but this time around they've made it like a little like knickknack shop. And now we make our way into what typically is Sideshow Square. But this year, no Sideshow Square that they've announced, but Cirque du Sinistro is still at the back. Hopefully we'll see some clowns roaming around. And check it out, we talked about this as well when we were here last time. It does look a little bit different because it is an actual like TV and it's one of the scares. If you stand here long enough, Jack should pop up and scare you. But it looks like he doesn't want to do it right now. We'll be back. We should be able to catch somebody getting scared. And last time we were here, we saw the Sinistro souvenir shop, but there was no souvenirs out just yet. But now, there are plenty. You got some of the like glow necklaces, as well as like some plates. What looks like a trick-or-treat spirit jersey. Very cool. Some house cream shirts. Oh, we might have to get ourselves one of these. A house cream hoodie. Check it out, this one has all the, the houses. Killerney Diner, Nevermore. You got Witch of the Woods, Dystopia, and Cirque du Sinistro. But, you know, this, I would put this in this order. Boom, one, two, three, as of now. And I like this, this is a nice, like, simple Hollow Scream shirt. Nothing on the back. Let's see how much these guys are. 
$24.99. And I wonder if you get your pass holder discount on these. Let's see, and the other shirt, $34.99. And yeah, that's because this is the house shirt. Let's see if there's anything on the front. Oh yeah, got the Hollow Scream logo. These two out, you got kind of like a, like a retro type of tie-dye one. And then another retro one, I like this one a lot. It's like Miami colors. And this one's $27.99. Let's see if there's anything on the back. Oh, that is dope. We're getting this done. Done, done, and done. And check it out, they do have those shirts over here and they are official spirit jerseys. They are $59.99 and check this one out. It has Howl Scream on the back and in the front, it has like a cool spider web and it glows in the dark. I like that a lot. Oh my God, they're gonna take all my money. Check it out, homage to the, the old show Fiends. And guess I'll die. So I did get that shirt and if I got one other item, I think it was if you spent like $30, I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. If you spent like $30, you get this cool Howl Scream blanket. Very nice and check out what I saw on the way out. Look at these guys. Ooh, scary. As we make our way through the area, I took a little detour because there's less crowd on this end. But also, I just wanted to point out, you got the entrance to Pantheon here, and it's been officially announced, opening March 2022. And it's sad to walk through this area without any clowns scaring you. But luckily enough, the clowns aren't gone. They've been rallied into Cirque de Sinistro. Let's go visit them now. And it looks like we do have another party zone right over by the entrance of Cirque de Sinistro. And we make our way into Cirque de Sinistro. Gotta love this little facade. We make our way in. All right, Cirque de Sinistro, an oldie but a goodie. And I got to see some of my favorite clowns in there as well. So I was very excited to check that out. They did change it up a little bit. The like, the little show that they typically do in the beginning to introduce you and like talk to you about the story of Cirque de Sinistro, they didn't do, but maybe that's because the crowds were a little bit low. I did attempt to use my quick cue again and they didn't take it. So that's another quick cue to use when I come back. And that little party zone in front of Cirque de Sinistro was going crazy when we exited. I wanted to, to like record it, but they're playing music that's gonna be obviously copyrighted and so I didn't. But yeah, there was like at least 20 people dancing and it was like patrons of the park dancing with some of the clowns that are out there as well. It was pretty cool. Now we're exiting. We're gonna make our way right over to Dystopia. And as we make the walk, right over here, there's a little bit less theming than usual. None at all, but this little walkway area is pretty cool. The escape from Pompeii does look pretty creepy closed down like this with all this lighting ahead of it and the music but that is not Escape from Pompeii right now. That is the area for Dystopia. And here we are, the entry facade for Dystopia. In we go. Dystopia, another oldie, but a goodie. The actors were packed in there, no empty spots, and they were doing their thing. I had a good time going through there. It was a little different, but very reminiscent of the old Dystopia. Not too much has changed. Now, that is all the houses, guys. Let's make our last walk through Ripper Row as we head out for our first night here at Howl Stream of many to come. And check out the spiders, as I was telling you. So this typically goes in that, that bridge when you enter meat market or exit meat market. But now they've like repurposed everything. The skull at the entrance, the pumpkin as you enter Ireland, it's all here, just in different places. And here we are. Gotta love that red ambient lighting in Ripper Row. Oh, I think I see Jack. And there's the man himself, Jack the Ripper. We make our last little walk through. We're getting to the exit, guys. Got these two young ladies to tell us goodbye. He's putting you in that box. 
<laughs> Alrighty guys, that is all from us here at Bush Gardens Williamsburg for their opening night of Palace Green. Bush Gardens Williamsburg has done a great job, so make sure to come out here and support the event, support the great actors that do an amazing job at making this event special for people like myself, like you who frequent the event, and also the newcomers. It was a really good time. All the houses were pretty legit. I look forward to coming back. Rest assured, this is only our first of many times that we come to Howl Scream here at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. And mostly now that I have those additional quick cues because they weren't taken when I went through the, the actual houses. If they're taken next time, whatever, but I'm, I was able to reuse them twice. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed coming along for the fun. I enjoyed putting it out for you guys. I will see you on the next video, but don't forget to ask yourself, have you been a detained?